फायर फाइटर स्टॉम ट्रूपर्स आयन मैन एंड मोटरसाइकिल ब्रेन वॉट डू दे इन कॉमन अदर दैन जॉइंट बॉल्स ऑफ स्टील helmets they all wear helmets should have come with a better segue for this helmets are the reason hundreds of thousands of lives are saved every day the motorcycle helmet has come a long way in its over 100 year journey today it is one of the most essential parts of your riding gear a second nature to most riders and for the rest of you a helmet is what prevents your head from being squashed like a bug which ironically also prevents your head from squashed bugs so where and how did it all begin This is Know Your Shift and today we'll walk you through the evolution of the motorcycle helmet. It's the year 1880 and a man Gottlieb Daimler, pretty happy with his Reit wagon or Reit wagon, whatever, decides to wear a leather cap with fur lining while riding his contraption. The cap offered protection from bugs and small rocks, like really really small rocks. But by 1914, motorcycles got considerably faster and with speed came people who were dirt and got severely injured by things bigger than bugs and rocks. So British physician Dr Eric Gardner who saw at least one head injury every 2 weeks commissioned one of the first ever helmets it was just a canvas shell coated with a resin called shellac he even pushed for the races of the 1914 Isle of Man TT to use them it worked with immediate reduction in concussions after a crash the fast forward two decades and we now have names like Harley Davidson Indian Triumph and Bruff Superior among others building motorcycles that could easily do triple digit speeds but the regular folk on the other hand still showed disdain towards wearing those odd looking egg shells over their heads talk about pre war chapris but a tragic incident in 1935 brought wider attention to the dangers of motorcycle riding a famous british military officer and diplomat t e lawrence aka lawrence of arabia check out that movie was killed when he was thrown off his bruff superior ss100 enter sir hugh cans kane kairon kane cans enter sir hugh cans an australian neurosurgeon who attended to lawrence during his 6 day coma hugh like most of us was pissed off with riders dying but unlike most of us he did something about it he did research his research eventually led to the british army ordering military riders to wear head protection it was a helmet made out of uh, rubber and cork but still better than just uh, hair right a decade later not much development was made to the helmet safety gear was just limited to uh, distinguished gentlemen riding their motorcycles with just hair gel and bow ties in 1953 professor c f lombard of university of south california usa designed the first ever shock absorbing helmet a huge huge step forward in helmet safety it had a hard fiberglass shell and an impact absorbing middle layer and a padded inner liner for comfort A variation of this design was picked up by Bell with a model 500 using styling cues from the helmets in the aviation industry. Meanwhile on the other side of the pond, Italian manufacturer AGV started building similar fiberglass helmets in the same year and thus marked the beginning of the era of the motorcycle helmet. And in spite of all these advancements, the regular folk they still went into saving their heads. It was around this time that Arai in Japan moved from making hats for the government to safety helmets for workers making heat treated resin shells. In 1952, Arai started using fiber reinforced plastic or FRP. And later that same year, the first Arai's came into the hands of off-road motorcycle racers. In United States in 1957, William Pete Snell was killed in a race car accident despite wearing a helmet. A medical examiner George Snively, who examined popular racing helmets of the time, found they were lacking in basic safety requirements. The Snell Foundation was made that very year and to this day Snell continues to test and rate helmets. In 1958, Arai started using EPS which stands for expanded polystyrene which is used by almost all helmets today. Though we have multi-density EPS liners and internal ventilation channels now, the materials in use have changed very little over the years. In around 1963, Bell made the world's first full face helmet and called it the Bell Star. Following the tradition of taking inspiration from the aviation industry, they used the same materials the US Army and NASA used in their flight helmets. The star was expensive and heavy. but offered more protection than anything else on the market at the time helmets were not a popular option among people until governments all around the world started passing laws that made wearing helmets mandatory by the 70s with the new laws in place more and more riders began to wear helmets by now the bowl shaped helmet was done away with and the open face helmet took its place this was preferred by most riders as it was lighter and cheaper than the full face bell star in 1964 the united states department of transportation created a set of standards helmet manufacturing 
manufacturers had to follow to attain street legal certification. The standard is actually called FMVSS 218, but as it was put into effect by the Department of Transportation, it is widely known as the DOT. By late 1970s, the Japanese invasion began. Arai entered the American market seeing potential in a market dominated by Bell. By the 80s, full face helmets improved a lot with features like flip-up and tinted visors. The lower weight also made these helmets a lot more accessible to the public. Then followed by the introduction of modular helmet which combined the convenience of an open face helmet with some of the safety of a full face helmet. By the way, no modular helmet has ever offered the safety of a full face. They are all certified as half face helmets to this day. Helmet materials and designs gradually kept improving until the world's largest study was conducted in 1996 on injuries caused by motorcycle accidents called the COS 327. This resulted in the European standard ECE, which is respected and referred to globally. The ECE in fact is the basis for the Indian helmet standard and the ISI mark that follows it. Thank God, because the committee that creates the Indian document seems to have no motorcyclists on it at all. Helmets have come a long way in the last 100 years from being eggshells made out of leather and canvas to modern day technological masterpieces that are tested in wind tunnels and are made out of materials like Kevlar, Tuaron and carbon fiber. Helmets are still improving and so are the regulations thanks to small number of dedicated manufacturers who are innovating and finding ways to improve helmets. But there's no point discussing how advanced your helmet is if you don't wear it. If you ask me, one bad hair day is better than a lifetime of being a vegetable. But remember, even Kylo Ren wears a helmet, just like his grandfather. It. So be like Kylo Ren. The helmet part, not the dark side. That we are doing next month.